and today I'm with Barn Yarns and I'm going to show you how to make this lovely machine embroidered applique flower. So I'm going to start with ironing the backing fabric. So the fabric I'm using today is a medium weight calico, perfect for this kind of job. So what I'm going to do is give it a quick iron. So I'll just do that. And I'm ironing on this lovely wool ironing mat. Perfect for the job. Really, really nice. It's lovely and thick and it does the job really well. So I'm just giving the calico a bit of an iron. And then what I'm going to do is choose some lovely patterned fabric because I need to have a lovely flower that's using a patterned fabric. So I'm using this, which is rather lovely. And it's cotton, but you don't have to use cotton. If you use a medium weight fabric, uh, it would be perfect for the job. So what we're going to do, we're going to bond it to the calico. And the way to do that is we're going to use this product, which is Heat and Bond Light. And it's perfect. It's great for bonding this lightweight fabric to the calico, and it will enable us to sew through it really, really easily, and it doesn't get stuck on the needle, which is great. So that's what we need to do. And the best thing to do is turn your fabric over, so we're on the reverse of the fabric, and I've cut myself a piece of this heat bond light, and you can see you've got that shiny side, that's the glue side, and then you've got the other side, which is the paper side, and we're going to pop that with the shiny side facing our fabric. Okay, so we're going to just place that there. Now, what I'm always careful of doing, because we don't want to make a mess of anything, is, is just to make sure that your heat and bond light is within your patterned fabric. Okay, so using a dry iron, we don't want any steam, you need to give that a two second iron really on there so that it bonds it to the fabric. And when you've done that, it needs to cool down before you peel it off. But we're gonna actually draw our design on there. So the flower, I've got a paper pattern and I'm actually going to draw using a pencil on here so it's nice and easy to do. So I'm just going to draw around that. So just an ordinary pencil, just draw around my pattern. Oops, just go around. Just hold it in place. Oops, a daisy. There we go. Just trying to make sure I don't get my fingers in the way. So just come round. There we go. Just make sure I've around the whole of the flower. Oops, a daisy. Be careful that you don't move it, just like I did there. So around we go. Okay, and when you've done that, we need to cut that out with paper scissors. But a good tip before you start cutting is to actually peel this away, because that will enable us to, to peel the whole thing off rather than just uh, doing it once you've cut it out. So peel a good corner of that off and you can see we've peeled part of those petals off and you'll see why I've done that in just a moment. So using paper scissors, just cut the design out. So I've done a flower today, but of course you can do any other kind of shape that you want to do. Anything that's appropriate for you, of course you can do a star or, as I say, any, any shape is perfect. And it's just really nice with a small print pattern on here because you're going to get a lot of the pattern in the size of the flower that I've done. So I'm just folding that back just so that I can see what I'm doing. So if I just go around here, and when it comes to the little bits inside, just make sure that you are cutting um, a big enough space and that the petals aren't too close together. So if you've drawn them a bit close together, just make sure that you've got that space there. So we're just going to go around and, and you'll probably notice with my scissors that I'm doing little cuts with my scissors and that enables me to get a lovely smooth petal shape. We, do, we don't want any 
severe angles. We want nice smooth petals and this way just ensures that we've done that. So we just go around again and just make sure that you're making sure that that's cut out. There we go. So get rid of the surplus and let's just have a look. And I'm quite happy with how that's worked out. And do you remember earlier I just peeled that off? That just enables that just enables us to um, peel that off really easily. So I'm just going to peel that off. And you can see that that's all shiny and that's going to be the, the side that we place down onto the calico. So if I just place that down there and now with a, a, a hot iron, we're going to just hold that in place for six seconds and that bonds that down. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And that should stick it down nicely. So that's looking great, especially on that nice light colored fabric. So that's all ironed in place. And now I'm gonna pop it in a hoop. So I'm going to use this lovely wooden embroidery hoop. And it's a great shape for getting um, lots of stitching done in that size. So what we're going to do is slacken the outer screw so you can remove your inner hoop. And you need to place the outer hoop underneath. So that's what you need to do. Make sure your fabric is over there and then place your inner hoop inside and just push that down. Now, hopefully I slacken that enough. Whoops, let's make sure I did. There we go. So why are we putting it in a hoop? Well, we're doing that because it's a single layer of fabric. And because we're free machine embroidering, the free motion embroidery foot does not clamp the fabric in the same way as a normal sewing foot. So if we're manoeuvring it, uh, we need to just make sure that when the needle goes in the fabric, we don't pull up the fabric with the needle. And by putting it in a hoop, we're going to create a really nice taut canvas and that will enable us to move it, maneuver it really easily. So I'm going to make sure this is nice and taut. And one of the easiest ways of doing that is by hanging onto your inner hoop. Make sure, by the way, that that's pushed all the way down so that both sides are, are level there. And if you pull the calico up at right angles, so just go all the way around, pulling that up at right angles. Now, the reason I suggest that you do it at right angles is if you pull it like that, you run the risk of flipping your inner hoop. And we don't want any flipping inner hoops, do we? So just go all the way around and pull that nice and tight. And then what I suggest you do is tighten the screw. Now these hoops are great because they've actually got uh, a line in there so that you can actually, um, sorry, a groove in there so that you can put your screwdriver in there, get it really, really nice and tight. So that's another advantage of these hoops. So just get that really, really nice and tight. So again, go all the way around, pulling that up and just make sure that's really nice and taut. And I find it easier to do this on a, a flat surface, not in the air, because I find that you get it really, really nice and tight. And what you're aiming for is as a taut canvas, so it's nice and tight, like a drum. So I've made sure that that's all done. And then we're ready to do some free machine embroidering. So what I've got in the, in the machine is Madeira Neon 40. So it's a, a lovely black thread. In the bobbin, we've got the superior polyester bottom line and that's 60 weight so the two different weights but the beauty of using the bottom line is that it actually is much finer you get more on your bobbin and it really disappears it doesn't come up and you don't see that at all so it's really good to use so we're going to go over and we're just going to machine embroider over this flower and what I'm aiming to do is using straight stitch I'm actually going to stitch just a few millimeters within the petal and because it's actually been bonded to the calico, it shouldn't fray. And we're just making a detail of, of stitching over that. So let's take it over to the machine, pop it under there. And I like to start on the inside of the flower and I tend to hang on to my thread, my top thread. And what we're going to do is just position the needle and pop the needle in the fabric, bring up your bobbin thread, and pop the needle back, oops, just do that. Pop the needle back in the fabric and we're ready to go. So I'm using a foot control. It just means that when I want to stop machine embroidering, I just take my foot off the foot pedal.
but I appreciate that some people like to use the stop start button and that's absolutely fine and so with the petal facing me I'm just going to stitch around the edge of the petal just a few millimeters on the other side so we're just going to go through okay and I'm going to turn my work round so that I can see where I'm going and it doesn't matter if I wobble a bit when you've done a few stitches you can cut your ends off and don't worry about that coming undone because we're going to be stitching over that when I get to the other side so again just turning the work round you can see that I'm sewing a few millimetres from the edge. So go at a quite a nice steady speed and that will enable nice smooth stitches. Of course you can use any thread but the reason I'm using black is that it gives it a nice bold outline. So just around the petal machine embroidering you can stop at any time I know it's a bit terrifying you set off and you think oh my goodness I can't stop but of course you can you can stop at any time and you can turn your work around you probably noticed as well that when I'm stopping my needle is in the fabric and that makes it really easy to turn the work around so just keep going round this is because I've got my work in a hoop I'm just spinning that round and I'm hardly hanging on to the work uh, you can put your hands however you feel comfortable just need to make sure that your shoulders aren't too tense and just don't hang on to it as if you're driving a bus because what can happen if you're doing that is that you end up pushing it down and we want to be able to maneuver that really nice and easily so just be gentle with it but you'll find the stance that suits you it you're back to the beginning so we've gone around it once which is great but we want to make that even more defined so I'm going to go around again and it doesn't matter if you don't actually go over the line exactly that you've already stitched it's quite nice if you don't but let's see what it looks like with another row of stitching so I'm going to change my thread now I'm going to do a little bit of detail on the inside and I've decided to use that blue I think that's going to really enhance it so I'm going to press the thread cutter and that cuts the thread top and bottom and then we're able to change our thread so you can see that there's some blue design on here and we're just going to enhance that with a little bit of um, decoration really so I'm going to keep it quite nice and simple you can be in as, as elaborate as you want but I'm just going to do some straight lines and I'm going to start in the middle and what that will enable me to do is start in the middle do one petal get back to the middle and turn round and that way I can do the whole design without stopping and starting and that makes life a lot easier. There we are so I've stitched all of the petals and I'm now just going to take that out of the machine so I'm going to use a thread cutter and that cuts the thread top and bottom. We can take that out and again as I say just cut that end off and there we are so we've got our lovely flower that we've stitched and you can use that in lots of different ways. You can actually applique some bottom of curtains. You could do that on a duvet cover. It has so many uses. And because it actually has been bonded to your fabric, of course it can be washed. So there's all sorts of things that you can do. Of course you can decorate garments as well. So it's a great way of using up some little scraps of fabric. Uh, you can do it on card making. You can also then further embellish your flower if you wish with beads you can make it really special. So I do hope you enjoy having a go and uh, it'll be great to see what you get up to when you do yours.